You know, I think what you're saying and what I'm saying are linked. I, I really do. And for those of you just joining us, we will uh, we'll completely reboot uh, what exactly we're saying. Um, I have become uncomfortable with where the discussion sits surrounding Giants baseball. There's way too much acceptance of one of two thoughts. Either, well, I mean, come on, we're not going to beat the Dodgers. That's a bunch of silliness. Not going to beat the Dodgers. Or it's almost a proactivity toward giving up, which is I mean, just play the kids. These guys, these guys aren't any good. So uh, let's move on. And then you're here talking about the Jason Worth story and how it relates to whether it's baseball or life. Winners, winners win. And people who have that mentality, that's what I miss about Giants baseball. One of the reasons I'm actually comfortable with 49er football right now, many aren't. You know, I heard actually on my way in today, the same caller who called in two weeks ago and we turned it into an entire show. I think his name is TC. He continues to pound this drum that you're you're like, you're an idiot if you don't think that the whole locker room has turned on Kyle Shanahan, which is the funniest crap I've ever heard in my life. Um, that locker room plays their butt off for Kyle Shanahan. And the fact that people are asking for money has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the Niners lost a football game in February. It has to do with leverage and the NFL and that they've got a lot of good players and contracts that are due soon. Like it has to do with nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. Um, but anyway, I'm so comfortable with the 49ers right now because I see that and I smell that. I smell desperation to win. They haven't done it yet all the way to the end. They have done it at a very high level. They haven't won the last game. But I feel that desperation, that absolute, like, we accept nothing less kind of a mentality. The Warriors are in a different state. They've already been to the top of the mountain so many times, and they're trying to hang on to something. Can they? We all know that story. The Giants sometimes, it feels like we're just kind of meandering through the summer. And, you know, we've got to plan, get some ideas, try, I'm going to try somebody named Trent over at first base for a little while. It's just like, what, what, where, where's that? Where, you know, the last, well, you know, we tried and, you know, we had a, gave him a big offer and, you know, we were in it. We were in it. That, like, that is starting to not feel good. It feels like both the team and the fans are sitting here in this sort of meandering phase of, of, of nothingness, this middle ground that's not like it's not rebuilding and it's not desperation to win all at the same time. No, and I think you're onto something there. And okay. You, I, I, I cannot disagree with what you're saying. And maybe when you have a new coaching staff and a new regime and one person does it one way and the staff does it the other way, that there is that learning period. Well, you know, Farhan and, and Bob Melvin have been together before, but not like in this capacity where I'm number one and you're number one. And what are we doing and how are we doing this? You remember last week I said in, in about Eric Miller and I wasn't a fan of him being an opener? Yes. Because he throws 100 and I would rather have that guy for late innings and just start whomever and bring him in. Well, that happened. And I don't know how they that happened. Won a baseball game. But that happened and they won a baseball game three to one. So, I, yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Was, was there ever any meandering with Brian Sabian? Was no, there any, he's any, not a meanderer. Well, I, I don't know that Farhan is or isn't, uh, but there's getting S done, and there's all the names that we've talked about, the, 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 the guys that have it, like that if you could bottle it and sell it. They don't care if they're your friends. They don't care about what public perception is. They don't care what anybody thinks about them. They just want to beat your ass. And they just want to be standing at the top of the mountain when it's all said and done, however they get there. And they're not trying to make friends along the way. Like they, 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 the last dance with Michael Jordan, like he said some things in that that literally gave me chicken skin and it got me <laughs> choked up. And I'm like, that's what it's about, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I wish we had that sound. There was one thing he said toward the end Something about when it's all said and done, maybe I wasn't the greatest, but whatever, but I, I, I won. 
and I found a way to win. And just like this thing on this tangent I'm on right now, this wild goose chase that I'm talking about, like winners, like that whole thing with Jordan and the stories I told you and Dibs the other day about being behind the scenes with Joe Torre and why they, I knew immediately from day one why they won. It was like I got an inside hall pass, like a, a credential to be in Yankees camp as a non-roster invitee, and I was just eavesdropping on why. You went to Yankees fantasy oh camp, my and then God. you almost made the team. Um, just but like to hear him have that speech about, like, we don't care who gets the credit, and we have a boss that's going to do whatever he can to help us. But anything but a championship here is a failure. Well, he told the team anything but a championship is a mm -hmm. failure. And then he said, the boss doesn't like to lose to the Rays in spring training. Oh, so we have to beat Tampa in spring training. So those training. games matter too. So the, so we got 168 training. games yes, this year. Yes, <laughs> that was well known. Well, I, I like. I guess my question would be: When have the Giants in this era swaggered into a room? I don't mean when have they gotten aggressive, because I would argue that this last off season, even though Target A, Target B didn't happen, that was an aggressive off season. They, they waited too long to do it, in my opinion. Is that their fault? Is it Scott Boris's fault? I don't really know. But, like, the fact that it's June 10th and will probably be July 1st before Blake Snell wins a baseball game for the Giants, that's a huge epic fail. That stinks. That, that, that That's not the way that was supposed to go. Montgomery sucks, too, though. Yep. Yeah. The whole thing stinks. The whole concept was totally misguided, and I don't know whose fault it is. I, is that Scott Boris's fault? The Giants' fault? The Diamondbacks' fault? The Cubs' fault? Who? Oh, everybody's fault. How would you answer that? Everybody waiting until whatever it was, April 1st it's to player, sign. It's the player's fault. Well, the, the, the biggest misconception okay, is that, 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 that you work for the agent. Okay, The fine. agent works for you. But, but, and I don't care who the agent is. And I see these kids all the time that they just don't know that. Yeah, you they listen, feel like but you I'm listen. working for Scott Boris. You no, listen to your Scott agent, Scott Boris works for you, dude. Right, but you listen to his advice. That's why you hire him. Yeah, no? but you got to surround yourself with people that can they supersede that advice. And I say, like, I, I don't like what he's saying right here, and you should go play, and you've always played, and you need to go, and what's an extra 2 or $3 million when I mean, you could just go play and be a part of a championship organization like get your ass out there and play i don't disagree with you but how do you look scott boris in the eye in the off season when you're expecting a huge huge contract and you're going to look at scott and be like dude you don't know what you're talking about i mean like he's the guy he's the guy he's the guy who's done this yeah but like, maybe i'm the wrong guy to ask because i'd rather be on the field with my teammates i i agree with you i did nothing could make me less happy or more miserable than sitting at home I, keep holding out, keep holding out. No, I, I just want to be in Scottsdale. I, I just want to be in the clubhouse. I just want to be on the field. I think they've learned their lesson. I don't think they would do it again. At least one of them fired him. You know, I, I don't think they would make that same decision again. But my, my point in asking that is not like I've seen the Giants at least attempt to get aggressive, but when have they swaggered into the room? When the Warriors signed Kevin Durant, that's somebody who's like, I'm not bleeping around. We're winning. We're winning now. Who, Damn it. Who, who, who said that, though? 49. Who are you talking about? Whoever acquired him. Who, who though? Which, well, I guess it was all of them. In that particular case, it's the Hamptons Five. It's people who flew out there to get him. That's my point. Like, Iguodala was like, I'm getting on a plane to go get my replacement. Let's go. The 49ers acquired Christian McCaffrey. We're not bleeping around. It hasn't even led to a title yet, but it definitely has led to we're not bleeping around. That's what I want to see the Giants do before the end of July. Show me what you're working with. Go get someone. Go like the fan. That's what the, the fan base is not, in my opinion, FP, the fan base is not waiting for that jersey we can go buy. You can go buy any jersey you want. And, and, and if the team wins, that the jersey that right now seems like a nothing will become a something. Any of these guys could become a fan favorite. Hunter Pence did, and it's because he came and they won. But, like, when are you going to go do something that is just a blaring message to everyone that says we're not messing around? We're not here to show that we're smart. We're here to win.
Period. We're not we're not we're not here to, to have good babip. We're here to win. Well, I mean, yeah, you're talking an old school guy, so I, I get what you're saying 100. percent So, what what would do it for you? Like trade deadline, we're trading Matos and and Kyle, whose dad's coming on today with us. I I would rather not trade uh, either <laughs> of those names, but, but I would I'm just say, saying it, it yeah. might take that kind of that kind of swagger into the room to do something maybe, like that. Maybe I'd rather trade a Carson Wizen Hunt than a Kyle Harrison. No matter what anybody says is quote coming. Oh, he's coming. Well, maybe. Maybe not. I mean, we've been told that Luciano is coming for four years. And then he showed up and he kicked balls all over the infield. I'm big on pros- I'm big on parades over prospects. Thank you. So, Anything. like, you know what I mean? Because prospects I, are just that, Mark. You just don't know. Right. And if you're going to give me something in somebody that I do know for something I don't know in whatever I'm doing, I'm going to take what I do know. So like, if you got a guy with track record, back of his baseball card, he has resume. He's won a championship. He fits into our clubhouse against somebody that I think might be pretty good. I'm I'm going for that guy. I'm going all in. See, I think I think Harrison already is a I know what he is. I think he needs to get better. I think he will. He'll develop more. But he's already shown that he can get big leaguers out. He's already shown that he can win games in the bigs. There's more to go for sure. I'd be much more hesitant to give him up than one of these other pitchers in the minor leagues that are supposed to be great. Yeah, but that's swagger you're talking about. Yeah. Look, nothing's off the table. That swagger you're talking about has to have the stones to say, I'm going to trade a guy like that for whomever. Not like, oh, no, no, no. No, no, nothing's... I I take nothing off the table. Isn't that what you're talking about when you talk... You brought up the story of Jason Worth and you're talking about winners win... Isn't that kind of what you're getting at? Yep. You got to have that look, that edge, and that's something that other people don't have, and you can't teach it. There's people that would love to win. There's people that like to win, and there's people that know how to beat your ass. There's a difference. I'd love to win. Winning's fun. The plane rides are fun. The locker room is fun. Winning is fun. But there's guys that want to beat you and beat your will to win and, like, rip your heart out and show it to you while it's still beaten. Those are the guys I want in my clubhouse. I also think that there. you look at the way sports teams are run by certain people. It seems to me um, there's sort of two things. Like there's there's that. There's the Yankees who decide that if anybody's good, then it's their birthright to have him. But that's because they're run with that kind of mentality. Like we refuse. We're, we're not losing. We're not, we're not doing that. Then there's the Dallas Cowboys who are like, they wouldn't admit this, but they're more interested in getting people talking than they are in actually ripping your heart out and winning. They're, they're, they Like Trey Lance, to me, was a great example of Jerry just wants to be in the news. He wants to be in the news. You acquired a third-string quarterback that is the biggest name third-string quarterback in the league. Jerry wants to get people talking. That's why he's comfortable all the time with the offseason of, do we pay this guy? Do we pay? Look at, look at all the people. Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, everybody. It's all about, like, the 49ers have a lot of contractual stuff going on. There's really only one where it's become a thing. That's Brandon Ayuk. McCaffrey did it completely under the radar. We'll get to Trent Williams in a little bit. But, like, the Cowboys just want you to talk about them. I'd argue that the Giants could use a little bit of both. Do something that's aggressive, that sends a message that you don't even need to say. You know, like when McCaffrey gets acquired, the 49ers didn't need to come out and explain it. <laughs> well, here's what we think. It was real good against left handers You didn't need to tell us. You're like, we got Christian McCaffrey. Thanks. Enjoy the game. The Giants need to do something like that. It both gets people talking and is is just a clear, like, dude, we're wasn't Blake Snell that win. for you, though? Because I know I was fired up about that. It I was hasn't, super it, it hasn't, fired up. It hasn't panned out the Correct. way I would imagine they'd want to and the Giants fans would want to so far. I mean, Blake Snell could win you a game in the World Series. Who knows where this thing goes? I'm not saying it's going to go there, but you never know. Yeah. It, it, there was a little bit of that, yes. And with Chapman? Um, I, I, I love Matt Chapman. I don't, I, it, again, aggressive offseason. I don't think you sign Matt Chapman and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, you ain't messing around. He's not like that kind of a player. Plus, they signed both of them to one year deals. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, 
The 49ers get McCaffrey. He's got three or four years left on a deal. They've already extended him for more. They're like, no, 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 no. No, like crazy aggression. We are here every year. We are not going anywhere. That's all. I, I think that's what people are asking for. Nobody in baseball demands a winner, a World Series appearance, or even a playoff appearance every year. I, I just, I think it's a mentality is, is what it feels like they're missing right now. The swagger, the walk into a room with a swagger. Don't you think? I'm getting you. I, I've told stories about Sabian, and I, I talk about Brian a lot because he was very integral in my career, integral in my broadcasting career too. There was some sort of first pitch luncheon where he was given a speech, and he goes, and F.P. Santangelo right there in the front row, hire him. He's going to be good at broadcasting, like in front of everybody in the Bay Area. So Sabes is, is I, he's near and dear to my heart. Uh -huh. And he's the one that apparently climbed the fence at Candlestick Park because it was public and they didn't have keys to call my parents to 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 say to sign me. I love that story. So yeah, that's a good story. Like whatever. So but like he came up to me and he had that and he pointed he put his finger right in my chest when I was hitting a buck fifty and said, Look, we don't make mistakes and he walked away. Like, we signed you, we know you can play, we don't make mistakes. So there's a different way to go about it now though, Mark. Like I think that that there's there's different ways to get to where you're going. And the, the way that's right now is the way that Giants fans aren't used to. So I think there's there's a lot of headbutting going on between the fan base and the upstairs part, which I understand. But I I'm wondering what would satisfy you as a Giants fan at the trade deadline. Like what would what would be what we're talking about here? Go for it. But but what though? That's 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 like saying I want a winner. Like there's so many different dynamics to a winning a winning person. All in on right now. But how? Where? Like, would you be willing to give up Chris's kid, Kyle Harrison? Would you be willing to You're give willing up to, Luis Matos, who no, was NL Player of the Week? Zero people are off the table. I don't know who. Like, when you say that, it's like, well, for who? Give me a name. Lindor, I, Alonzo. Like, Alonzo. A of, uh, there's a lot of. I'm I'm torn on Pete Alonzo. And they because, need a, they need a shortstop. They do. Yeah. Vladdy or Bo Bichette. Vladdy or Bo Bichette. I'd, be, I'd give up a lot. Was that in my ear or on the air? That was on the air. I was air. on the air. All right. <laughs> Damn, I wanted to take that like it was mine. Vladimir Bolt Bichette. Yes. That's a yes. And I'd give up a lot. I'd give up a lot. Yeah. For both of those guys. Mm -hmm. A but lot. But Lamont Wade Jr. Is, was having an all-star season until yep. he blew out. Yep. So. Yeah, I know what you're saying. And I agree with what you're saying. But it's... It's just a different way of going about it. That I think, I think there are some adjustment periods that we're all kind of seeing happen right in front of us with the new coaching staff, the front office, and hopefully those things mesh in a way that that's conducive to. But that's going on everywhere in baseball. That's not exclusive to just the Giants. There, there's a lot of math and a lot of old school. Like when the salt water hits the fresh water, and you see like the the muddiness and the murkiness going on right now. And there's. There's that that give and take's been going on for a good like seven, eight, maybe longer years so far. There's a, that was the question that was in my mind when Luis Matos got sent down. I know there's the all the things on on its face, which is hey, like you told us last week that you heard he was crushed. I know people questioned whether or not this would nail his confidence, and then the simplistic kind of thing of well, come on, like we would rather watch Matos struggle than Slater. Because at least it feels like there's development going on, um, you know. But but my question immediately was: Are the front office and the field on the same page? That was my question immediately. Because Bob Melvin said out loud, Luis Matos with Jung Hu Lee out, he's got runway. He's our center fielder now. And two weeks later, he was in the minors. I'm like, that's not the way it works. You don't say it into a microphone. And then, and then go back on that two weeks later, it made me feel like they were not on the same page. Front office and coaching staff doesn't have to be on the same page. They just can't, ha they can't be polar opposites. They can't hate each other. Or it happens what happened in San Diego last year. Right. Y well, you can disagree. Reasons, but that's interesting. Like, yeah, I this, can, wait, wait, what are you talking about? I'm not starting that guy. I'm not leading this guy off. Like, well, the computer says, well, this is what's saying. You could have that disagreement because the front office and the coaching staff we're on the same page the last two or three years for the Giants. The exact same page. Well, there was all a, the time was on only, the same page. There was only one page. I don't think that's ever good in any line of work. I agree me. with you. You got to have give and take and constructive oh. conversations. And if it gets heated, it gets heated. 
so what? That's the way it should be. They, I don't think you have to be on the same page ever okay. with your boss. All right. No, you don't have to be in complete alignment. I don't even know if that's what that means, though, by being on the same page, because you also have to, I would argue, not contradict one another. Why was Luis Matos crushed? I I would guess Luis Matos was crushed not because every, every, you guys are ball players. You know, if you don't play well, you could get sent down when you're 22 years old. That's not news. The reason it surprised him so much, I felt, was because like he felt he wasn't going to get sent down, which means someone told him, you're not going to get sent down. He felt that way. He felt like he had more room than he did. That tells me he's being, and this has been the Giants' problem for the last two to three years. There are players who are being told one thing and then shown another. Hey, Sean Maniah, you're a starter. Just kidding. Hey, Ross Stripling, you're a starter. Just kidding. Hey, Conforto, you're an everyday guy. Just kidding. You're a platooner. That, that, you know what I mean? Jock Peterson wasn't mad because they told him, dude, you're, you're not facing lefties. Maybe he told them that. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get specific. Right. Maybe he said, I'm not facing lefties. Maybe. 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 Just maybe. That's how that went. But just maybe. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just to clear things up a little bit. But no, I, I, I get it. Uh, but none of those things are happening anymore. They, they, like I told you in the handoff thing, you, uh, Elliot Ramos has started 24 games in a row. You don't see all the platooning and the pinch hitting and the line changes. There's been a shift in philosophy. Now, is it totally the manager and, and, and no more Farhan? I think Farhan still has a big say in a lot of things. And I think there's a, there's a constructive give and take and what goes on daily, if I'm guessing. I don't know facts. You know, you hear things. But, like, I I think that's healthy. It did not work with Gabe and Farhan just agreeing on everything. If we sat here and agreed on a show every single day, Monday through Friday, nobody listened. No, as long as it's still healthy, though. Yeah, I mean, it's you not fabricated. At, you are looking at a manager right now who last year, and I think he was largely in the right, but last year that became toxic with his general manager, Bob Melvin and uh, A.J. Preller. That became toxic. Why is it on the Giants now? <laughs> and and this, is the, this is not my opinion, but talking to former general managers, and t- the, the one thing that can't happen is that. You just can't have, I hate you, and you hate me, and you're the GM or the president, and I'm the, and the manager. But we can disagree. Like Ned Coletti used to tell stories on air about him and Brian Sabi just having knockdown, drag sure. out, screw you, screw you, you know, all kinds of expletive-laden fights after games about moves and players and what should go on. And next day, they go for a walk and talk it out, and it would be constructive. Uh, we're sponsored.